hot. What you doing? Charging a battery. I finally killed the dolomite that wouldn't die. <laughs> Sounds like you're about to kill the radiator that won't die. I'm gonna do something. Murphy so instead of an old man riding around on a mobility scooter in the nursing home running people over, it's diving in a bobcat. It's about the same thing. Is he gonna take that with him to the nursing home? I think so. <laughs> They're gonna have to build bigger hallways. <coughs> Murphy! If you guys remember the last part of episode, I am losing track of episodes. Uh, the last episode we put up on the B, we put a little preview in there of the 5020 with the Caterpillar engine in it. Here's where we're picking up on the series. Uh, we're gonna get it offloaded off the trailer here. We're using a Bobcat, pull it ahead with a 4020 on the rear to kind of with the, ride the brake so we can get it off the trailer slow. So that'll be our first step here in the project, is getting it off the trailer. We got John over there running around and his dad Ivan is gonna be running the Bobcat here to get it off. So we got a log chain hooked to the front on the skid loader and a log chain hooked to the tractor. Murphy, stay. and easy. A tractor on the back is hopefully heavy enough and not. I would say the most heavy enough, but it's off. Now she's sitting on the ground. Be a lot easier for us to do a walk around of it now. And there you have it. That's how you unload a 5020 with a 3150 Caterpillar in it. Now that's off the trailer, we can get a lot better look at it. Stay. she sits. Now we can get a lot better look at it. Get a lot better feel for what we're playing with here. 3150 Caterpillar. If I remember right, John says it's a predecessor to the 3208 Cat. If you guys remember from episode one, not episode one, you guys remember from the end of the last episode there that uh, M&W makes the adapter for it. And there's really only about around 40 to 50 of these that are ever known to exist. Here's the M&W tag on it. Murphy. Now. Now. Now, Murphy. See me two minutes ago. He's so excited. He's excited about something. Hey. No, no need to twine. I don't feel like pulling it out of your you know what later. But he looks like it's so much fun. Murphy is not really well trained on farm dog stuff. Pretty sure in the instruction manual that's how you unload them, right? Something like that. Maybe, well, maybe once it needed a braking tractor, but... 
We didn't need her getting away. No. It's kind of a Murph's like what? Expensive piece of. If you Murphy, you want to go ahead and bite on that, you fuck it. It's kind of an expensive piece of junk to get away on us. Yeah. 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 I'm still digging the stairs. They're going away. <laughs> I'm still digging the stairs. They're pain in the ass. I can't load the cab on my trailer. <laughs> I gotta take them off to set the cab on my trailer to get rid of the cab. Which the cab really, really, really needs to go. Yeah, the cab needs to go away. I did kind of clean the cab out. What's left in the cab is garbage. Garbage. Last video, the guys didn't get a look at the cab on what's inside of this thing. It's, it's not much. You know, a fallen headliner, but removal of the cab will fix that. Then the question of the day is if it's getting row crop fenders or wheatland fenders. That's, That's the question of the day? That's the question of the day. I think the question of the day is removing the cab oh, and trying both out and seeing which ones you like better, not? Well, the Wheatland ones are still installed on another tractor that we don't have. No. Oh. So you have well, an the idea of what they look like? The are in the shed upstairs on the other farm. But well, you have an idea of what they look like, though. Is this the only marking on here that says M&W? No. Mm, the bell, you can't read the one on the bell housing. And there's one on the lower water neck. This will be a little bit more of an up close and personal look at this thing because they didn't get a good good look at it with it on the trailer. There is a section missing right in here. That's and here comes Ivan's uh, mineral tub motor. Where's my dog? Eighty year old man on his kid like it, on his phone like kids. God, it's like looking in the mirror and looking at dad. <laughs> So the biggest, uh, the, the, the hardest part to replicate here is there's like 11 inch spacers. Murphy. Hey, stay here. Between the uh, hydraulic pump bracket here Murphy. and the, the adapter front engine mount. That's gonna be that and then the, the coupling between the hydraulic pump and the, and the front of the crankshaft is gonna be the one of the harder items that I'm going to have to refabricate, but the engine fan hub, I was doing some looking as a generic Caterpillar engine fan, like the... One second, John. Hold that thought. What are we missing? The sole. Anyway, back to where we were, or whatever, vice versa. There's about 11, 10 or 11 inch spacers that go here to here. Uh, we're, we are missing those, and the drive between the hydraulic pump and uh, the front crankshaft of the engine. Uh, so that I'm gonna have to all refabricate. The fan hub is a standard run-of-the-mill CAD adapter hub. Look, uh, bear, look, looking in the parts catalog, it looks like uh, Bearcat Stigers, anything with that, this Cat V8 used it. So it's gotta get down to the local junkyard and see if I can find one. No, the 3150 you said was a predecessor to the 3208? Yep, a little smaller. Well, it'd be about the same as a lower horsepower 3208. So, but these kits originally would have came with a 3160 cat. So this has been repowered. This is a remanufactured engine. It's got all brand new oil in it. I know nothing about this engine. It could be a fresh engine. We don't know. But we, uh, we'll find out when we get it running. The local truck shop is trying to source me a new diaphragm lift pump because I did do a little playing with it here the other night. Turn and I uh, was turning it over with the starter and there's no suction on the suction line with that diaphragm pump. So we're going to try to source one of them because I don't have high hopes for that. And uh, fuel filters and then we can get a, a run, get it, get it running and see, see how good it runs. So Dylan has a question already. I don't have an answer. Why is there a greaser on this uh, boot here? Uh, plug a hole, if I had to guess. It's for the boost gauge that for the turbo that it doesn't have. Oh. So. Just 
So all you asking know, the strap is not holding the engine in. It's holding the push pole for a blade that is coming off. Uh, in the next video too, we'll have uh, exhaust on this thing. Got to got to have all the little things first. Yeah. Oh, we got to we got to do everything that doesn't make it run. Put on it first. Yep. That'll all be in tomorrow. I don't know did Dylan transfer flappers. No, he Dylan didn't. I can do it in the morning and still get them tomorrow. Yeah, I figured that. Four inch. Yep. Four inch flaps. Yep. Come on, get out of here. Nope, I can still do that tomorrow at work and still have them same day. Yep. Well, I'm gonna go visit the fridge. You visit the fridge. I might be fired over. Just like a hired hand, as soon as the work is done, it starts, huh? Just about, yeah. Really not. Isn't it nice having a helper around? <laughs> Could you hold the flashlight in the right spot? <laughs> too much grease. Too you need much to find the drawbar pin. It's right here someplace. It's right there. Why don't you walk around back and pull the drawbar out? Oh? Yeah, keep going. Ugh. No more. There you go. That's enough. But is Murphy really helping? Hang on a second there, repeat it. Almost. So close. We got it. We got it, boys. And the we first get... part off the tractor, here we go. The first piece of uh, scrap iron. Actually, this is pretty good metal. I didn't say it. I don't know if I'd scrap it. I keep it around. Now I need to draw our push back in. Go that might be, it's got to go up. No push. Yep. Yeah, well, he's, he's oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't, don't touch it now, because I'm going to, I got my finger punch. <laughs> what did you say, kick it? Now you can, sure. <laughs> kick it, all you want. Hope you sprained your toe. PTO turns over. You know, I just seen a cartoon here this evening that really pertains to this. I should have saved it. Really? But it was. It really pertained to a 5020 with a caterpillar in it? Well, sort of. What we're doing. We're moving a drawbar? Or a piece of square tubing that shouldn't be there. Well, if you let me if you let me finish. If you allow, okay, I'll, I'm I'll, sorry. I'll uh, <laughs> illustrate to you what the cartoon was. It was of uh, a cartoon of a well-used, uh, per se, Chevy pickup, square body, and two guys sitting around. You were saying? Really, sitting around it when they had just put brand new rims in, and they were really excited about it. I'm sorry, they were what? Really excited and happy about it. <laughs> I give up. <laughs> going on. I won't find it. I can't remember what the line, what the caption said. It's gone forever. Scratch, scratch what I said. That made the journey, question mark? It did. All the G-forces, then, because I hauled it backwards, that's why. Ah, held it in place. I don't know why I'm doing this. It's got to come out anyway. It's got holes in it. 
Now it just won't blow off with a next 40 mile an hour wind. Which we might have tomorrow. Or I hope not tomorrow. Get like 92 tomorrow. 92 tomorrow is brown to bring some thunderstorms. It rained today. It did, yeah. Coming back from lunch, I had to have the wipers on. Are you coming back out tomorrow so we can put the exhaust up? Well, fuck yeah. I mean, quack, yeah. They're faster than you are. Murphy. Hey. Come on. Come here. What do you do with my beer can that I set on the cab that I was going to throw away later? I threw it further into the cab. Oh. <laughs> I was going to throw it away, but I just stored it there for the time being. So this is where the alternator goes. Will that bracket work? Well, this is the alternator bracket, bracket, bracket. And that's the tensioner holder upper bracket. We just need a, a little, probably a little shorter alternator. But, or... I gotta. I probably just end up building a bracket to go on that bracket. If I can't find a bracket, we're gonna have all the brackets by the time we're done. At least building a bracket ain't the worst thing to make. No. It's when it comes to connecting this to that. I have pictures of what it's supposed to look like. Oh, uh, good. So we can just tape the pictures to it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Something like that. And then one of these these lines all got a yeah I seen one was not they're gonna very get re healthy. they're getting replaced but one of these goes here I gotta weld that back on before the front end falls out this one no it's that one that one's broke oh I gotta re weld that bracket back on which means it's gotta go way over there where the welder is which could be a little entertaining could be oh we got a bobcat yeah. we can do anything. If we can't do it with the bobcat, I'm pretty sure I even can slice bread with the bobcat. And butter it too. What are you talking about? So it's a pretty darn rare tractor that it could possibly be a one of 50. Yep. Yeah. Where do I hook the oil pressure gauge up to on one of these? Because this is the line to the gauge. Uh, I don't think it just, I don't think it just, no. And I got the extension. Oh. I got A in it and extension. So where does that meet up with if you keep the natural bend going? Just about to the fuel tank. Oh good, so the oil pressure was hooked up <laughs> to the fuel tank. <laughs> Maybe it was fuel pressure. Fuel gauge. No. Jersey? Why is my dumbass just thinking this now? Why, when you made the comment about the greaser, you said it was to plug something off for a boost gauge, and I don't see a turbo. Why is I, my? I, I did say something for the, about that. I you did, the... <laughs> but my dumbass is just connecting the dots now. Have I worked on this before? <laughs> this is the important wire. This makes it run. I unhooked that last night. Then the little solenoid does work. Perfect. You got the turn over though, didn't you? You said? I almost ether started it last night. <laughs> I, was, I was that close. I had the ether can on the trailer, but the battery was weak. And, was, and with low batteries and ether don't go good with engines. That's when you break things. Is so I quit, be, I quit for the night. Is that before or after you put the custom rain caps on? You weren't supposed to notice that. Oh. I'll just edit that out. Yeah, because I peeled all the duct tape off. So I figured I'd re-duct tape it. My T-Rex tape. Hmm. What a mess. I suppose you just wanted to eat their starter just to see if it made a noise. Yep. There's the tack drive. Mm, yeah, Where? sourcing that tack meter might be fun, huh? Yeah, and I see it's, there's not one in there. It's just a generic Stuart Warner tack. Well, I'm more curious about where you hook the oil pieces gauge up to. Yeah, 
Yeah, you definitely got me on that one. I would like on our on our first startup, I would uh, I would kind of like to have an oil feed gauge. Let's make sure it's moving oil. Considering I spun the filters off last night and they are full of brand new oil, and the oil on the dipstick is brand new. You can take that as a positive note, I suppose, at least. I know like nothing about these guns, caterpillar. That makes Other than I have a feeling I might be taking the water manifold off. Maybe. Or we just might leave that alone. Or we might leave it alone until it makes a bigger problem. And then we'll source a different engine. Got me on that one. Get on the old interwebs. You're the mechanic, fix it. It's beyond fixing. <laughs> She's ducked. Other than I need a shorter bolt here. I did take this scandalous bolt out last night because it was way too long. And it didn't really want to come out that nice, but it come out. Injection pump, fuel lines. You know, I wonder, because Lines. There really isn't a lot of random ass <laughs> grease on it either. No. The oil filters over here. Is there a little bung over here by the oil cooler? Oil filter? What's that? What's that? Thing? Wonder if I take it out of the right here at the filter. Yeah, there's a plug. Could be. Oh no, right here. I found it. I found it. Uh, ah. You're right, follow the bends. But they don't lead to the fuel tank. They don't. But sometimes the natural bends can answer a couple questions. Aha! Aha! We'll leave them loose. That way, we have an oil leak when it starts. Then we know. But then we know it has some kind of oil pressure. If there ain't no oil under it. There ain't no oil in it. We're not working on one of those. Oh, my bad. Or multiple ones of those. How many splices do we need in, in line for an oil pressure gauge? I don't know. I'm just still disturbed by what looks like a Scotch lock up there. Or what's left of a scotch lock. Like I said, we're gonna clean a lot of this up. That fit, we gotta get that 5010 home so I can rob the parts. Lots of parts. Mm-hmm. 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 Just connect yourself. Make magic happen and connect yourself. So then we'd be done with this in like two weeks. Maybe make it make noise in two weeks for sure. Or it's not gonna take us that long. I could have, I probably would have last night. I could have. I feel like we're getting off track here. Just a little. Go on, just let pick the cab off and let set it on the ground. Well, if Ivan can slice bread and butter toast with a skid loader. I need it in one piece. Are you saying the bread comes sliced? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Were you just log chaining it up through the windows? I'll be nice. I'll use, I'll use lifting straps. They're not as hard on the sheet metal. That's kind of what I had in mind in the first place. I don't know where else he left these cabs off of. I don't know. Well, at least someone else maybe found a balance point at some point in time. Well, if it comes off not that nice, I guess it's not the end of the world. I'm not emotionally attached to these cabs. Is this a deer cab or what? who manufactured? Sort of. Sort of. It's a Salerno cab. They're made in Minnesota. Oh. Contracted through John Deere. Yeah, they definitely just wrapped a chain through the cab. 
And that's exactly how I'm going to try to get this cap off. <laughs> that, I think we're going to take like a ratchet strap. Uh-huh. Yeah. There's some interesting marks here. Take a ratchet strap around here, maybe, and uh, we'll see. We're going to use my service truck to do that. Gotcha. Or I'm going to. Well, if you're listening to the cab off, I think that should be on film. Yeah. What is John Deere lacking? Uh, with these cabs? Let's check the hydraulic oil, shall we? Oh. I, I don't know. If, I doubt there's anything on the stick. Eh, 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 eh. Get out of there. How much oil is on it? Oh, great. Now we're hitting the seat. I, I, I don't know. Let's see here. None of it. Oh, oh wait, wait. There, there's a drop on the bottom. I knew it was really low on oil. So. Oh, now the question of the day is, can I get a fish back in there? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, that, yeah, I got the right angle of the dangle that time. Get back in there. Are you trying to put the carpet in there, too, or yep. no? Yep, and then also... I'm sure there. it was a thought-out process. It was. You know, it's fine if you don't have a cab. But in their infinite wisdom, let's put the oil add, the oil fill right there next to where the seat bolts. This, this is not factory. This is a farmer thought about this and said that's pretty dumb and let's make this a little better. But this is the factory cap. Oh, there, and he could have put a, he didn't need to add the. Does he get enough threads on it? <laughs> Jeez. He could have put a little shorter nipple in. So with the cab off, we won't have to deal with that. The bottom pins are there. The, I the top turn the PTO there. shaft, that moves. Yeah, these are there's a trailer there. Yeah, because these are all hydraulic. There's a hydraulic clutch pack in the transmission. These aren't with PTO. So on top of it being an M&W kit that could possibly be one of 50, you found a 5020 with three point on it also. In central North Dakota, yes. Which is why I paid what I paid for it, which is, I really don't care. Well, so it's great plenty. I'm sure there's plenty of people out there that will look at this and think, why in the hell would you buy something like that? Save it from the junkyard. But then you start looking at what it actually is, and then you start seeing value in it. Yeah, the three-point arms are... Does this thing have chloride in it? No, it don't. Okay, so it just has big wheel weights on the inside. Yes. Thank God it doesn't have chloride in it. We got all the tires. And all the wheel Those weights. are not bad tires, Jenny. They're still decent tires, it looks like. I almost bought it without the tires. Are they making a deal without the tires, or what? Could have saved a thousand bucks. Ah. But then I thought it was going to cost me more than a thousand dollars to get rims and tires. What changed my mind? Almost that? got, almost got it. Uh, Fifteen hundred dollars. I was down. I was down. Fifteen hundred without the tires and the hood. And then, uh, well, I guess I ended up paying the full asking price. And now it's on my. It's off my trailer. It's on the on the ground. It's not going anywhere. This is the third link, though. That's gonna be entertaining. Fun. Expensive. That and a quick hitch. Those two items would be kind of spicy to find. Some for sale around North Dakota. I would uh, wouldn't mind uh, trying to get my fingers on some. On one, two. Maybe we'll have a viewer out there that will donate one to our channel and our cause. That would be sweet. But Drop down, drop it, drop it, drop it. Piece of tractor tire. Closest thing he's gonna find to a tennis ball. Probably. Come on, bring it here. Oh God. So graceful. Drop it, drop it. Okay, drop it. You were saying? 
I guess he's gonna carry it out and bring it back. You gonna bring? Or don't? I th I think your dog's still half cat. <laughs> or quarter cat. Yeah. I think I threw my back out on that one. I saved it. I wasn't worried about the cooler. The radiator wanted to tip over. I think I threw my back out on that one. It's on you. Murph dog. Murphy. <whistles> There's nothing back there for you. I have fallen, I can't get up. Right, Murphy? You gonna help me up, Murphy? What do you see over there? Dylan's next pet. What is this? I got my piece of garden hose. I'll keep him entertained for a while. I should keep him entertained for a while. <clears throat> oh, okay. Alrighty, guys. Well, we'll see if we can make a video out of this. Where do you, where do you want to start with this hot mess of garbage? <laughs> this whole vid this whole video has been nothing but a hot hot garbage. Hot mess garbage. It's been something. As you can tell, this video has been kind of. Uh, not really task oriented. We've been kind of all over the place talking about random things. This and that. We uh, had a little higher hopes of doing a little better job of uh, filming the uh, unloading of this tractor. But uh, I don't know. It just it, it it just didn't work out quite right. I don't know if it was the hot weather today or I think we were both just kind of meh. <laughs> just, we were just kind of, yeah, meh. Not, not really into it, but. So we, we got a bunch of stuff kind of cobbled together. It ain't going to be our, our best video, but no. the tractor did make it off the trailer straight, straight-ish, yeah, and safe. And it looks better on the ground than it does on the trailer. Uh, like I said, probably before, uh, you'll see, probably like you'd seen probably earlier in the video, I did I did hook a battery up to this tra this engine last night, spun her over by hand with the battery for a little bit. Uh, the battery cables aren't great but they will get replaced uh, i don't believe the diet the fuel pump is the injection pump i probably works it should work but the lec the diaphragm lift pump i believe is out and i got a local truck shop trying to source one of those for me uh, i've been waiting to hear back from them they're getting me oil filters and a fuel filter even though i spun the oil filters off and checked the oil it all looks brand new we'll probably I might still probably drop the oil and put fresh stuff in, even though it's getting pretty spendy, but buying a new engine ain't cheap either. Uh, as you can see, we got a spaghetti mess of wiring and fuel lines, and I routed some of the hoses back to where they go to keep the dirt out, uh, and stuff like that. I kind of wish I knew where this tractor come from, from the salvage yard. Salvage yard didn't really we kind of want to divulge that information because I don't I don't know so open maybe where this come from I the guy has passed away there about a year ago so I don't so I don't know there might not be anything left out there but I was hoping I could maybe get a hold of the family and see if there's any of the hydraulic pump parts that we needed still laying where this tractor was was sitting but I can't seem to get the information where this tractor come from uh, so I guess I will be. I got I got pictures of what what it's supposed to be in there. I will be fabricating them or getting a machine shop to fabricate something that'll work. Uh, like I said, uh, the fan hub that's missing. I'll go to the, the where this tractor come from. It is a tractor salvage yard. I'll go and scrounge around and see if I can't find any remnants of a old Steiger, Bearcat, or Cougar or something that'll have the same fan drive assembly on it. So. I should be able to get one of those. Uh, I need a tie rod end. I see one of them is busted and welded, and I'm going to replace that. Uh, the cab is going back to the salvage yard. They do have a buyer for it. So I'll probably end up trading the cab in for some parts I want for this tractor. Uh, if I take the cab off, I'm going to need a platform. And like I said, I do have that 5010. Uh, standard tractor with the row crop with the Wheatland fenders and a it has an aftermarket cab on it 
but it might be easier instead of taking that cab and getting the platform all that all that business off it might just be easier to source a uh, floor pan off a tractor that's that's already dismantled like i said i have no attachment to this cab it's i know what some of you might say but as far as i'm concerned other than this air cleaner bolted at the side of it it is scrap iron i have no love for these cabs so and the guy i the guy that's dismantling tractors out there said that he's got somebody that that wants it and so i'll uh i'll take it off nicely i'll gotta take a crane lift it off set it on my trailer take the steps on the side so i can set it off so i can set it down nice uh, and I'll, I'll haul it down there and do some horse trading, trading for some parts. Like I said, a platform. I want uh, the cover over the top of the hydraulic pump that's not all torched apart. Which I could take out of that 5010 tractor as well. But which would also require me stripping the whole front of the tractor down. Which I'm going to be close to doing, but I don't... Like I said, if I can leave as many parts on that tractor just so they just don't disappear or get damaged would be good so I'll probably get one of those uh, floor pans one of those tie rod um, whatever else I can maybe maybe think of all oh, that fan hub if I can find one of them I might do some digging around and get some more dig around maybe get some early 4010 fan hub, uh, hydraulic pump drive parts I don't know throw a bunch of parts in a pile look at them I know what, what's supposed to drive this hydraulic pump, but maybe if a guy can come up with something a little different to do it a little easier. Because I'm no, no machinist by any means, but I'm a fairly decent welder fabricator. Uh, so I can maybe come up with something. Something to run that. Uh, uh, and then, yeah, we'll clean up. We'll get rid of this mess of wiring, relocate. The, the batteries, pro, I'm not sure where I'm going to put those. Probably back under the floor pans like they are on a regular 450-20. Uh, fuel tank has some pinholes in the bottom. We'll see if I can braise them up or, or solder them up. Or, or I'll take it to the local radiator shop and see if he can do anything with it. I'm going to take the radiator in right away. It's got some cracks around the filler neck. Have him braise solder them up right away get the radiator straightened out uh, get that done uh, yeah uh, hopefully the next time you see this thing it'll be running oh well we'll be in the process of getting it running so I'd, li I'd like to hear it bark off for we won't can't run it very long obviously we don't have a cooling system and with the engine running, the a pump, the transmission lubrication slash charge pump for the hydraulic pump will be running, and that'll end up pumping oil out of the transmission up through up to where the hydraulic pump is. We'll put a bucket down to try to catch it, and uh, it's just gonna make a mess. So we're just gonna get started. Make sure you know, make sure the engine runs, sounds good, it's got oil pressure, all all the good things. And then we'll move on. Probably, I don't know. We'll probably do that before we get the cab off. Uh, and then get the cab off and do get the cab off, get the platform. We'll try out. I got row crop fenders and we'll see. I'll set them on, see how I like them. Or I got the, like I said, I got them Wheatland fenders on that 5010. We'll see how, we'll play around a little bit uh, here and there and see what, see what we like. Uh, uh, too bad that uh, 5010 fuel tank would fit in here, but because that one's plump full of diesel fuel, and that tank's good, but they got the wrong different filler necks. But anyway, yeah, but that tractor will donate hydraulic coolers, oil. We'll get rid of these rubber lines. We'll get all hard line plumb back in. We'll try to make it as close to original as we can with the parts we have. Hopefully, the truck shop will get back to me on that lift pump tomorrow. And then uh, here, next day or two, we can do a do a will it run? I guess I have zero history on this engine. I believe well, this isn't the original engine. This is probably engine number two. This is quite possibly tractor number two that this kid has been in. 
I wouldn't wouldn't surprise wouldn't surprise me a bit. This tractor did have a blade dozer blade on it at one time, and you've probably seen us me wrestling out a big square tube from underneath. That's what that was part of, and that was just held up with a ratchet strap so it wasn't dragging. And that's what these big brackets on the front here are all about. And they will be going down the road and come off, get thrown out in the iron pile or source for welding material and maybe some other projects. So, did get the tire fixed. The local tire shop had a good used tire that's black and round, holds air, and the price was right. So, can't complain about that. It's not matching, but can't, blank. can't complain about that. So, but anyway, that'll probably about wrap her up for tonight. Uh, I again apologize. This video was kind of, other than other than this, was kind of a hot mess of just kind of randomness of uh, us unloading it and kind of just talking and you've probably heard some of this two or three times by this point in the video like i said the i ordered ordered exhausts for this tractor so we can get rid of the duct tape and so this we got three inch pipes coming out of the manifolds i ordered three to four inch adapters and just some straight four inch pipe from napa non-aluminized so it'll rust kind of blend in with the tractor uh, we'll get them probably sized up and put on here the next this next week before we get it running. Priorities, you know, we got to get. No, I got the rain caps under control. I got that taken care of. Don't you worry and then, about that. And then that. we're getting good rain caps from John Deere because nobody else seems to make a decent rain cap anymore. If you guys uh, know of a place that makes a decent rain cap, please leave it in the comments there. Let us know. Yep. We were gonna put chrome ones on, but uh, the more we, I had some stray exhaust pipe laying around. That was all rusty we kind of set them on we liked how it looked with the rusty view with the rusty pipe and stuff i might give them a coat of matte black muffler paint but more than likely to match because the rain caps are going to come black so i'll probably give once i weld all the the adapters and the pipe and everything all together uh i'll probably give them a coat of matte black paint muffler paint with the with the rain caps on and then we'll get them put on and then Hopefully that, that fuel pump, they, they can find that. We can get that put on. If not, well, if we're fine, uh, we'll give her a try once. See if this one actually is does do anything. I, it didn't really seem to want to the other, uh, the other night. So we'll, uh, we'll give that a try. Fuel shutoff solenoid is working. I did test that in case I needed to order a new one of those as well. That's, that clicks on off. That seems to be working. So the engine cranks over just fine. Uh, we'll get some, uh, we'll get a auxiliary fuel tank hooked up to it, uh, a good hot battery and probably, okay, so anyway, we had, uh, typical GoPro problems, battery died on us, but anyway, I think where I was at is we were talking about, uh, getting a good hot battery and I think mentioned something about hooking up uh, a boat tank or at my place, I have my infamous lawnmower gas tank. I think that is, uh. That has uh, nursed a lot of tractors around this farm prior to us thinking about recordings, recording our shenanigans, my shenanigans. So we'll get that hooked up, some diesel fuel in there, and uh, we'll probably, with no radiator, I'll probably just kind of duct tape in the garden hose in the lower in the lower water pipe and put some hoses here just to funnel it to the ground, just to, uh, Put a little coolant in the engine just that way we can run it for a little bit but we, like i said we can't run it real long because the transmission pump is going to pump oil out you know big three quarter inch line at a few gallons a minute so we, i mean we can only theoretically run this for a couple minutes anyway so we'd probably be all right without antifreeze in it but don't want to or water nothing. or coolant we yeah we we want to keep the damage to a minimum like i said uh we know nothing no history on this engine and we, I intend to keep it because I'm uh, doing some reading. These uh, these older 30, 3100 series cats got a little better fuel system in them than the 32, 3200 series cats. So people like these fuel pumps, uh, injectors. The whole work seemed to the hold up better, I guess. It's kind of what the gist that I read online, what little bit of it I did read online. Uh, so we'll, we'll do that. Uh, we get it running. It'll be kind of a, that'll just kind of, just kind of want to get it running to hear it run. I just, I just want to hear it run. Like I said, we're going to, we'll probably end up doing the, like I said earlier, the cab, all this stuff off before I end up 
doing the hydraulic because that that's going to take a little brain brain power on my side and scavenging and maybe a machine shop to build some parts so that'll take some time so we'll do some of the the fun easy stuff to make it look good you know you gotta have something i gotta make it look good too i guess you gotta have momentum Got to have you got to keep got to find something that keeps you motivated in your project. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be something simple. Like as it said the even just put the exhaust the new the dual exhaust on up 3 to 4 inch exhaust with everything on there. Just something to keep you motivated in your project. You know, this is a, a kind of an odd tractor. It is uh the story I was told it's one of one of 50 of these kits that survived. So this is a very rare combination between deer and cat. And M and W out of Illinois. Yep. M and W was kind of I don't know they're famous, but you see you, they, they you start, see quite they, a bit of turbo kits out there of M and W. Yep. I started life making aftermarket parts for Farmall M's and H's, and so I don't know. In our last video, uh, we're gonna digress again. In our last video, if you happen to catch the ending, we did discuss it a little bit. But if you didn't, I uh, recommend you go back and watch that. That's uh, I believe the B episode four uh we threw a little teaser in there at the end on this tractor but the the story i was told from a kind of an m and w guy is m and w made about 70 or 75 of these kits and uh so they had these about 70 or 75 of these kits built and the building ended up burning down that they were uh so they uh they figure about anywhere from the 40 to 50 range they managed to put they had some sold out and shipped already but they figure between that 40 and 50 range actually made it out of that fire they were able, able to scavenge the you know i mean it, it's pretty solid stuff i mean it's it's big big solid steel frames and stuff and whatnot so they were able to scavenge enough parts that besides the ones that were shipped out and the ones that were uh, scavenged out of the fire. Hold that thought for one minute. We got a we got a, we got a passing local freight train. So anyway, before we got interrupted by our local freight train, uh, like I was saying, that they figure. The, the, the word is out on the interwebs a couple of people I've talked to and uh, uh, read online that they figure 40 to 50 of these kit complete kits survived survived that fire uh, back in the in the 70s it sound I think seven mid 70s but anyway it's a it's a super 80 m and w kit uh, can't can't really show you but the the adapter plate is stamped M and W. The intake manifold is the M and W. M and W piece has got a lower lower M water pipe M and W. It does have the special M and W clutch, the whole setup in it, uh, which was specific to this to this setup. And uh, so, it is a, it is a pretty rare kind of a rare special tractor. Uh, I'm gonna do my best to put it back together. But anyway. That's not we could we could talk about this for days and weeks and we could put three point arms on. That reminds me. I need point I need you to order me some pins for the three point arms. It only has it only has one of the two pins that I need to put them on. So okay. keep that in mind. Uh so anyway, yeah, uh before we digress any further and start babbling on like we were earlier, I would uh appreciate if all you folks uh would like and like the video and subscribe to our channel would uh, would greatly help us out uh, and you'll be seeing more of this tractor we'll do our best to try to record the video uh, re record the progress on it like I said last night I got a little ahead of myself but I was a little excited I spun a, put a, just threw a battery on it just to spin it over with the starter but I that's about all I did I just made sure the fuel shut off solenoid work it turned over but anyway before I get off on another tangent again and I, back to his subscribe part so looking at some of our content in our channel 98 percent of our viewers are not subscribed to our channel just throwing that out there it does help our channel tremendously if you do guys do subscribe and like to the channel 
I think it is absolutely great that so many of you have watched our videos and have subscribed to the channel already. It definitely gives us the fuel to keep making more videos because we see how many people out there enjoy watching what we do out here. So if you guys can please like and subscribe to the channel, it does help us out a whole bunch. Or if you don't, this tractor will get built anyway, but, yeah, but we, we, we would really appreciate it. <laughs> all you fine folks out there in YouTube world. We'll see you all again in the next video. Thank you guys for watching.